Scruffy Audio Network. Hey, thanks, program director. I don't know if I've ever done a uh, live podcast with the music banging in the back like a radio on a Tuesday afternoon. Hey, listen, everybody, I'm here with a good, good friend of mine. He's like a son to me. His name's Chase Thomas. He's probably the uh, number one Cleveland Browns fan that I know, or Cleveland Cavs, or Indians. I've never met uh, sports enthusiasts like the Cleveland Ohio guys. So um, Chase is in for about three or four days down here training, getting some stuff done, business, pleasure. He's spending a couple days with me, sir. and I thought I'd do a podcast with him. Um so we're in the wood gym. It's hot as balls in here. It's about 110 degrees in the wood gym. People don't know whether they uh, see it or hear it. It's very hot, half insulated, half not. Uh, the turf room's not, so it gets really, really hot. And the weight room is, but it's still really, really hot. So Chase, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. Good man. Good being here. Yeah. What's, uh, the, what's the turf feel like it right now? I'm sure it's, it's, it's pretty. It's decently. Out there. Yeah, it's, it's hot. It's, I don't know if I've ever done an afternoon podcast. This is our first. I don't know if we'll do another. I know. <laughs> well, I feel very special. It's, it's, uh, well, we got to get him. He's got to get back out, out of town tomorrow. So he's booting and scooting and booting. So um, I'd like to open up all, all my shows with one question to all my guests. And I think you apply for it. I know you're a teaching pro now, uh, you know, retired player. What was that? Tennis. Yeah, we know he's tennis. Okay. I'm about to say. Like, we, we get it's tennis. Thanks, Johnny Carson. Okay. Um, when did you know that you were different? So for me, I would, I would qualify myself as more of a late bloomer than anything. Um, I was a multi-sport athlete growing up. I, I was uh, a gifted athlete in a couple different sports, but didn't really have much of a direction personally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was playing baseball until I was about you know, 13, 14 years old. I was playing tournaments in, in tennis up until about that age too. Um, but honestly, I, I really didn't realize that I could do something uh, athletically uh, until, you know, 19, 20 years old. So I would say once uh, I did a couple years of college and then once I, uh, I kind of started giving it a full go, I, I realized that maybe um, I could do something in a sport uh, playing and if not, you know, just put myself out there enough where I could learn a lot and, and, and maybe make a difference on the coaching side. So you like... Um... You know, I've known you a while, and you you lived with me some, and, and you know, you're always your your passion for tennis is probably more than any tennis pros I've worked with. So, I think I always find the most passionate people are the ones that make the most better coaches and actual players. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I have one elite player that will actually uh, go on to coach compared to the. Uh, the marginal pro, the marginal colle- collegiate athlete that goes on and becomes passionate with whatever sport right. you're doing. So when did you know that this is what you're going to do? You know, I honestly, I, I always say that um, if you had asked me, you know, 14 through 19, like if I was going to be involved in tennis later in life, I, I probably would have laughed at you. So, uh, you know, once I uh, once I got my move down here from Cleveland, I was working at the academy next door to the gym here. Um, so once I started doing some stuff with some of the better kids here, and, and they started making a lot of progress, uh, I started to realize that uh, maybe the coaching aspect was something that I was was good at. So um, I would say probably around 22, 23 years old is when I started to realize that um, because of how I could play and because how I could connect with, with young people that um, maybe coaching was something that I could do really well at. And, and, and what's your age? How old are you? I'm 30 now. So I turned 30 in March. Um, so with 30, where do you see yourself? You know, because I think you come down here for a lot of, you know, your trail of spice of, of life coach to train to the environment, see all the guys, you know, train with a lot of these pro athletes from Harrison Smith, Josh Malone. J.P. Smith, the tennis guy that I had on a while ago. Where do you see yourself in the next year to three years in your profession? So it's it's hard to say just because 
I think um, a lot's happened really quickly with me in the last couple of years. So um, obviously I was down here training with you and, and uh, kind of soaking up everything that I could while I was here. And then I moved back to Cleveland about five years ago. And when I got there, there wasn't really much of a program in terms of high level where I was. Uh, and then me and this, this other guy got together and, and started this program and it's really exploded. And, and in that time, we've had a lot of kids come up and, and go through the ranks and, and play really high power five elite tennis. And then uh, from there, just because of the successes I was having on the court with people, uh, it kind of uh, cascaded from there, and I was I started to work with uh, some higher level professionals, and um, once I started doing that, um, I kind of realized that that I could probably try to, to get into anything. So um, you know, in the next five years, I'd, I'd like to keep in you know kind of getting myself further than I than I already have. And, and you've had some uh, pretty cool opportunities the last year or two years when you were telling me you were working with Mary Jo Fernandez. Son, Son. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you went to the Australian Open with? No, so so uh, my wife and I went to the Australian Open um, with uh, with each other, but uh, a client that I worked with, Lauren Davis, was was playing uh, in the main draw there. She's been top 30 in the world on the WCA Tour. She's been number one players in the world. Obviously, you mentioned J.P. Smith. Uh, he's an Australian guy who we go way back, and I've done a bunch of stuff with him, and uh, he was playing there too. So it's a good excuse to kind of go there and, and, and work with them a little bit and, and do uh, do some stuff there. And um, I thought it was amazing. The open was, was, was fun and, and getting to see uh, those, those people play at that level and, and uh, actually got to meet Roger Federer because of some of the connections I have from Cleveland. And, um, so that that was definitely a life changing experience for right? him. Yeah, I mean, because your passion for tennis, I mean, it's twenty four seven. It really doesn't turn off. Anything we talk about, you're on all the time with it. So, mm -hmm. with that, you go to you. So, I know you went to Wimbledon also. Was that for the same person? So yeah. So um, one of the girls I mentioned earlier, Lauren Davis, she's a Cleveland girl. She grew up uh, with us playing and. Um, she was in Cleveland for a little while, and uh, just from her and I training together, working out together, uh, she gave me the opportunity to go with her to uh, to England for a couple weeks last year, and we went to a couple tournaments, uh, Wimbledon included, so um, that was my first time at Wimbledon, and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll have a couple more opportunities to get there, but I mean, just, just being in that environment and, and soaking that all in and, and kind of seeing people at the highest level of their profession, uh, it's pretty inspiring. So... In, I know we talked. Have you done the U.S. Open? Uh, I've not done the U.S. Open yet, um, okay. which is ironic because it's the closest one. I'm sure, that's on crazy. Uh -huh. well, he keeps telling me to go to Wimbledon, and I was like, <laughs> okay, but I've been to the U.S. Open. <laughs> right. He's, you know, still yeah. go away. Yeah, yeah. So you think, you know, you should go there. Yeah, for sure. It's just, it's, when it is, it's kind of a tough time for me just because of the stuff I have going on at Cleveland. Well, you got a baby coming up this that yeah. same month. Yeah, exactly. So U.S. Open usually in August. When uh, did she do? End of September. So, so you could squeeze it in. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's usually like end of August, and it usually ends at like 8th or 9th of September. So that's usually when the final is. So, I mean... I guess potentially I could get there. Well, you know, if we could get Hot Rod, well, he, he, you know, JP's the type of guy he asks for one ticket. He's like, nothing. And I'm like, really? Nothing for the challenger? Like, we got nothing for us. You know, I sponsored the thing, but that's, we should actually try to do that if JP's in it. Yeah. Which sure. I'm sure he is. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll be in the doubles for sure, and he'll probably be playing qualifying for singles. So. Yeah. Catch a Yankee game. Ben, ben Rogers will be there ben, also. So yeah. he's the yeah. overall yeah. American yeah. community that yeah. he worked with. Yeah. So, so your next road is like, I get, I, you know, I know you come in here and we try to make the, some decisions of where you're going to go, and what right. route to take, right. and all that jazz. You know, coaching for a school, coaching for a club, or do you go out there, you know, and as they say, let your nuts hang and start being a teaching pro on the tour, you know, it has its pros and cons. And, you know, would that be one of the things you look into? You know, I think like, uh, just like any other profession, you know, you just kind of have to work your way up. And um, if I ever had an opportunity to, to start with somebody and uh, kind of kind of go from there where, um, you know, you go through the ranks and, and I don't think it's very lucrative at the beginning, but uh, depending on kind of how your players are doing, or, you know, what kind of prize money they're making, how much successes they're having, I think it all kind of dictates, you know, 
how how lucrative it can become. So um, I, to me, it's it's never really been about the money part. Um, obviously, you, you mentioned that I, I just have a, a passion for the sport. So um, I just like being around people who strive to be the best that they can be, um, which is why I'm attracted to coming back to the way gym, even though I haven't been here for five years living. Um, I try to get back here, I mean, you know, like once or twice a year, just kind of hang out with you and, and get some, some workouts in at the gym and, and hit some balls with some of the people I used to work with here connection-wise. But I just think, like, you know, for me, it's I'm just kind of living my life one day at a time and, and um, opportunities keep presenting themselves to me. So, um I don't know if that means that, you know, maybe I'm doing some of the right things, maybe I'm meeting some of the right people, maybe, uh, kind of like we used to have the passion, maybe that I have attracts people to me in that way, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I just, like I said, it's, I try to take every opportunity that I can get if it feels like it's the right one, um, so hopefully down the road, um, I would love to, to kind of be out there doing my thing on a tour at some point with somebody, so hopefully that, an opportunity that comes my way again. So it's, it's kind of, uh... I don't know if it's a, a hindsight 2020, but is it one of those things where, like Harrison Smith, you've had since eighth grade, and you, you bring him along and have him go pro, or Chad Pennington since 15, you bring him along and have him go pro. Uh, is it more that route, or is it a route where, say, hey, J.P. Smith wants you to get out there for like three weekends in a row to Cincinnati, Atlanta, all of a sudden he has he has good numbers, good showing, whatever the words are, tennis. And then from there, it's like, oh, wait, I'm popped onto the scene. Is it easier to pick up a pro, or is it easier to hitch your, your wagon to a developmental person working all the way up through the ranks? That's a good question. Um, it's tough because just because of being in Cleveland, Ohio, um, a lot of – Good players are, are kind of obsessed with the idea of being in Florida, being in California, being in these places where you can play outside all year long. Obviously, in Cleveland, we're indoors a lot of the year playing tennis, and that's not necessarily ideal. Um, but we have had, you know, a girl come through the club that I trained since she was, you know, about 12 years old, and, and she's somebody who's got pro aspirations. She's been on the tour now. Um, so, I mean, it's... It's, it's hard to say because once once you kind of develop these kids, sometimes they end up having success and then they go to a place where they feel like they can really excel even more because they, you know, like I said, maybe going to Florida to an academy where they can play with other pros or, um, or have more opportunities to get into events because they're closer to them or, or whatever. So, you know, it's hard to say. Like I said, I'm in a unique position just because I know a couple professionals. Um, so I've had the opportunity to go and do some stuff with JP, do some stuff with Lauren Davis. Um, and but, that's, you know, that's really like, like you said, coming from Cleveland, yeah. or Knoxville, you know, which are two hotbeds for tennis. Sure. You know, that, that's a pretty big accomplishment already at your age. Yeah. So the next question I would say is, and, you know, tune in on this one because it's kind of cool because I had to do the same thing and think about those things. Would you be willing to move to further your career, your coaching career, as in the California and Arizona or Florida, considering, guys, let me tell you something, whether you're watching or listening, this guy is a Cleveland born and raised, true blood, all the way through. All the way, I've never met a guy that loves his sport town in the city. I mean, parallel, I, I, don't, I don't know. You know, I really don't understand that. I mean, it, it, it's it's a real cool passion with that, too. Right. Now, but like, say, you know, I, I know Nick Bulletary from Chad training down at IG Academy sure. and, and uh, Dobbs down there, mm -hmm. and, you know, Nick's a go-getter, rock and roll, all that type of jazz. Would you, and, you know, because those are other connections. That's another right. avenue for you yeah. of, hey, would you be willing to go down and work at Academy? we got another Maria Sharapova coming up. Yeah. You know, would you want to do something like, would you put yourself in a different circumstance to get there or would you wait for the Ohio thing to happen? I think I would. Um, obviously, like, I moved down here. I didn't know a single person that lived here. Um, I was, I think I was 22 years old, 23 years old. Um, and an opportunity came uh, to do something different. I moved to Knoxville where I knew no one. Working at an academy where I, you know, had never been. Um, and I, I kind of just took it on completely and I think like if the right opportunity presented itself, I, I would definitely be willing to relocate uh, to do to do something like that. But uh, but yeah, I mean obviously Cleveland is home, and 
Uh, I think that if uh, I think a lot of people are probably in the same point as me in terms of uh, obviously Cleveland's not like the sexiest place in the world to live, but um, it's, it's funny because it's uh, it's a really big character building type of town. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of people have a lot of pride that are from there just yeah. because. You know, people do it the hard way there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the winters are tough and, and the summers are hot. And obviously, it's, it's we were talking about how hot it is in here today. But um, I, just, I just definitely think, like, when you when you come from a town like that where you have to earn everything you get, uh, it's definitely a, a, a character-building type of place. Yeah, and I think it's crazy that this kid is uh, from Cleveland, Ohio, better. Well, you know, on the campus here of the wood gym. And then he came and lived with me some. And then close friend of mine, Jimmy Haslam, buys the Browns, and all of a sudden, we're connected a little bit more around right. the Cleveland Ohio. I just need to take a, a time out here for a minute. Um, my program director asked her for a towel, and I think she gave me, like, a gas station or a main cleaning towel out of all the towels I just bought this week. I don't, I don't even have a white towel. And it doesn't smell well. I think somebody used this one, and it's like, here, Chaz, wipe your face off with that one. So, you know, that's how it is in the woods, Jim. You get what you get. The pick character, the pick character your, building. The pick and your slim. So uh, a little bit more detergent Adversity. next time. Okay. Or maybe Adversity. fill this one out or give it back to the maid. Yeah, I think Conus pisses on this one. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure it is. Yeah. I'm, yeah, it is. I'm sure it is. I'm sure. And a dog lover this guy is, too. Forget about it. But seriously, you guys staying with me for about three or four days, and the TV has been on Wimbledon all the time. Oh, yeah. 24-7. So I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm having some serious like FOMO right now. Yeah. Out. Like, I know. Was there last well, year? It, yeah. It's yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, I mean, the courts are amazing. I know everybody's like, you got to get over there. Yeah. Someday I will to, to see some of that stuff because, right. you know, the, the tradition or the historic or the history that that stuff had sure. is, is absolutely amazing. But we definitely should be able to look into the US Open. No, yeah. Even for two or three yeah, days. Anyway, I'm in and out. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do anything else but probably go to the US Open and then come back for a day or two. Maybe the Yankees game, you know. I did, I did love watching the Yankees grow up. And I know you're an Indians fan, you know, American. We need to watch that a lot. Yeah. Like that, you know, it's um, Let's get off the subject for a minute. What sport do you go to the most? Because you go to all of them, and you're at everything all right. the time. I mean, I'd say I'd say baseball the least out of all of them. Really? Yeah, just because I don't know. Once I stopped playing, watching just didn't. Watching wasn't the same to me as playing. So, but that stadium a little bit slower. is so cool. Right? Yeah, no, it's not. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You know, yeah, when we yeah. come in and we're driving to the Ryan Hotel or yeah. whatever, it's sitting right there. Yeah. Because the football stadium is down the other Right on the lake. Yeah, right. it's on the other side of the town. Yeah. And so, it, it's really cool. Yeah. So, the Q, or, or I guess it's now, they changed the name to Rocket Mortgage mm-hmm. Arena. So, it's not the Q anymore. But where, where the Cavs play and where the Indians play are actually right next to each other. And it's kind of like. You know, towards the middle of the city, and then the Browns play like right on the lake. So, to answer your question, I definitely I've been you know a Browns fan since I was a little kid, and and uh, we've had season tickets in the dog pound like pretty much my whole life. So, I just grew up you know loving football, watching football. Um, although like you know all those runs that the Cavs had in the finals, I I was at every finals game. That was in Cleveland too. Yes, so I know. LeBron's like you know my idol. So oh, we got a girl back here with a Cleveland jersey on out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, she's so, modeling the Cleveland jersey. Right. But so yeah, yeah so the Browns bar down are are my number one and Cavs number two. And there's no hockey. Is there soccer? No hockey, no soccer. So so, it's, so those are the three. It's bits. a football town in a big way. So you know. Obviously, like when the Cavs won, it was incredible. It was a lot of fun, and, and I was downtown for that. And uh, it was a night I'll never forget. Um, but I mean, if the Browns were to win, I'm pretty sure that the city would, would burn to the ground. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, you know, the odds are are, are are going so much better this year. Oh, yeah. Sure. This will be a fun year. This will be uh, the best year that I've had in recent memory going to watch. Yeah, and let me tell you, viewers and listeners, he had to defend his Browns yesterday with I some did. of the pro athletes yeah. in here about all the moves they've made. Yeah. And he was a. Uh, Ganged up on, but I, I think he gets ganged up on a lot with the Browns, and he defends it pretty well with all his uh, knowledge of the sport. The it's been tough to defend them in the past, for sure. And I, I try my best, but obviously I, I have to kind of tap out a lot of times. But Well, if, if you don't have, you know, plus seven wins this year, I mean, it's, okay, it's yeah, going to be. For sure. I'm, I'm thinking ten wins, but we'll see. We'll kind of see how the team matches. <laughs> <laughs> According to Harrison Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I do think... It, I think it would be unique if you turned into a teaching pro coming out of Cleveland, Ohio, 
Sure. That would be a very unique situation because mm -hmm. it only takes one. Yeah. It only takes one deal. It only takes one client to do that compared to going to Florida and having the, yeah. the hay bed of everybody sitting down there. That's where everybody goes. Right. You know, it's, the same, it's kind of the con same concept with the wood gym. Yeah. Yeah. Why Knoxville, Tennessee? Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully, someday, someday soon, you're say why Cleveland, Ohio? Because right. Chase Thomas is it. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that will be like, I'm going to Cleveland, Ohio. Well, it's, you know, it's that. At least you have the sports, you have something to do. Yeah, definitely. You have more to do. At the Wood Gym, you're, people fly in here, you're just training. Right, for sure. I mean, there's yeah, not too much to do. Knoxville's not Cleveland for sure in, right. in terms of the size. And I'm not a big recreation guy, I'm not boats guy, or go out much. So we just sit at home, train, sit at home, train, sit right. at home, train. So well, that's the why, that's why I came here. I mean, you know, I mean, we we got training going on on the right. on the floor right now. Why are we doing a podcast? You know, right. multi. Yeah. Luckily, I had my Asahi bowl <laughs> from Clean Juice. The beauty bowl. <laughs> Yeah, the beauty bowl. I got the. I feel so beautiful. <laughs> All right, Chase. I know. I know. We got a lot to do. You got to go get a dinner in with some. You know, uh, a tennis guy that yeah, you're so with the family. Yeah, and then you got to yeah. so yeah. fly out. I just wanted to get you on the mic and, and uh, listen to what you got going. I love guys with dreams and ambitions that 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 are realistic. You know what I'm saying? If he sure. came to me and goes, "Hey, I know you know Jimmy Haslam can get me a workout with the Browns." You know, that's not realistic, but what you're trying to do is... is Fred, you know, about my 40-yard day? Not yet. We got we to post it. Yeah. All right, well, I love you, and I wish you the best thanks, of luck. And, no, uh, thanks. thanks for having me on, man. We'll do it again. I really appreciate it. I'll see you at the USO. Yeah, man, I'm excited.